WTF, why is everything selling off? Stocks are having a really rough go for the first day in September. People have their hair on fire. So let's jump in and see exactly what happened. Dow ends lower after economic data that came out. When was that? That was at 10 a.m. So stocks went precipitously lower after roughly 10 a.m. We'll come back and look at that later in the show. That was manufacturing data. This came out at 9.45 a.m. and then 10. Okay, so that's the first reason why stocks are down. But today was a meltdown. Everything is selling off, right? But there's a lot of stocks in focus, notably NVIDIA, down by nearly 10% today and down more in after hours. So WTF, like what's going on and why is everything also going lower? Well, headline from uh, September 1st tells us that China warns against Japan for retaliation on possible new chip curves. With what? With possible new U.S. rules. To what? Clamp down on China. Okay. And this is after on May, 1st, uh, May 30th, they did something similar. U.S. is slowing AI chip exports to the Middle East. For what? For fear of them getting diverted to China. Remember, there's an election coming up. And uh, ironically, Trump was actually just on, uh, on Frex, uh, Lex Friedman. And I'm going to listen to that later. But... Here you go. Here's some headlines that are driving the market for fear. So uh, this many people, again, you can read the title. I don't really want to do it. You can do it for yourself and uh, read this one here, right? Nice little doozy. Okay, more sanctions. So the U.S. is using military and they're using currency to try to dominate the world. And uh, there was one also for uh, <coughs> the other area in the Middle East, which is for roughly 10 people. So yeah, people are not very happy. And now Apple's rally fueled by AI promises approaches a crucial test. And then we got Tom Lee over here saying, you guys should be cautious. And this is really ironic because not that long ago, he was saying that the Russell was going to go up 1% per day every day. Let's listen in. September cut. So where does that leave you in terms of uh, what is seasonally, Andrew just alluded to it, September's not great. And we know, I mean, we always make lows in October or we have many, many times, which means usually a lot of times September was not great. I think investors should be cautious for the next eight weeks. You know, September. Next eight weeks, be cautious. That's, that's, yes. You're not always cautious. That's right. When we, market's been up seven of the eight months this year. So it, we know it's an incredibly strong market, but we also have the September cuts and we have the election, things that'll get people nervous. I, I think in the next eight weeks, people get a, a chance to buy. So I think it's good to be cautious, but just ready to buy that dip. You have, because you're fearless and you'll say anything. I, I, I... All right. So just for time, that's all we're going to listen to today. Come back on the stream tomorrow if you want to listen more. But I just want to explain what I heard from my point of view. So Tom Lee is basically saying that <clears throat> maybe we're going to get a dip. Maybe we don't. He was really bullish not that long ago, but we're starting to see some technical evidence for what we would see for a larger crash on the S&P. Very simply put, we've now fallen below the June high. That's at 550.28. We went to a low of 549.51. So what this means is that if we now fall below the 50 DMA, which is also at roughly 549, that's at 548. Hey, that likely means we're going lower, right? I'm not going to try to pretend like uh, the charts are not uh, doing what they do, but let's have a look here. So for the S&P specifically, that would mean that we would fall back below the 50 DMA. That's not good. If you remember from the weekend, what I said is that if we lose the weekly higher low, that's bad. And then we have to look for potentially all the way down to true support, which is here at 510. But don't be discouraged. What I want to do is leave you with a little bit of hope. Because there's going to be a lot of do lot of doom and gloom out there. What Tom Lee also talked about is that, sorry, what uh, the host here talked about is that the market usually bottoms in October. Well, it did for the last two years. So that's called the recency bias, where you, you, you remember things that happened more recently. October of 2022 and 23, those were the bottoms. That's what the arrows are pointing to. Another data point that I've kind of stopped looking at, but I've picked up again recently here, meaning today, is uh, Bitcoin on the left versus S&P on the right. You can see here that we don't actually manage to make a new higher high, and we lose the 50 DMA, get close to the 200, and then bounce back over to a slightly lower high. Well, that's exactly what the S&P is doing right now. So if the pattern's going to continue, well, that means we're going to double top, then we're going to go down, form a lower high, form a lower low, get another bounce, get a death cross. Hey, that's not good. That's not bullish. No, it's not. So what this really comes down to, like I said, is that if we print the lower low, then we could be go going lower from here. If we can't go down a little bit more, how are we going to go down a lot? I know that seems really simple. And again, if you guys don't mind, please considering to smash a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. I would greatly appreciate that. 
So that's the bearish case in case you were living under a rock for the last 24 hours. Now let's look at what, what can move the market for the rest of the week. Why? Because we got a lot coming up. U.S. jobs data will help the Fed gauge the extent of its moderation. All right. The Bank of Canada may cut rates tomorrow too. Okay. German data do. What does that mean? It means people probably forgot at 9.45 tomorrow, 15 minutes after the market opens, and I will probably stream through that so we can see that at least the initial headline. We're expecting another cut. So potentially another cut, and uh, we'll see what happens here. Um, in terms of that, we have to also think about what the Fed could do. That's the soft lending narrative we talked about on the weekend. Uh, former Cleveland uh, Fed uh, President Mester, a strong drug report won't change the Fed's rate cut decision. She used to be a pretty big hawk too. So what does that mean? It means if these numbers come in hot on Friday, uh, that this would not be hot. This would be back to normal. This is good in my opinion. This is the number I don't like seeing here, the average hourly earnings. Unemployment rate going down, non-farm payroll going up. That's good, in my opinion. <coughs> we'll get an initial reading for the Thursday number as well with the ADP non-farm payroll. Just note, ADP has not been very reliable lately. All right, so pushing forward, we have new inverse signals for today for SARC, SQQQ, and for the DOG. Those are inverse signals for ARC, QQQ, and uh, the Dow Jones. This is after we saw even more alerts coming back all the way to uh, August 1st, August 22nd, and August 24th. This basically means there's a window of opportunity of a few weeks for the market to go down. That's the Bitcoin scenario we just showed you here. If we now lose the 50 DMA, it means we're going to be also losing our monthly low. That's bad. And we probably want to have our hair, hair on fire. So now to finish off the part that uh, Tom Lee's talking about here, what I really want to show you is that I have two strategies here. Strategy number one is whether we make a new all-time high. And I want to show you this at the end of the video because I just want to make sure that uh, the people are going to leave the comments that uh, I'm expecting today. Um, I want to make sure you guys get the good stuff here. Okay, so scenario number one, and this is on Trello. So if you want to go to the link in the description, um, it should be stockstodayjustin.com. It's a free page. Go right here, September 2024. We'll now, we'll, now, we'll now actually archive this. There we go. We'll click right here. I have a strategy for September and October which is what Tom Lee said. He said for the next uh, eight weeks. Let's actually also copy this link over here to the video. So I have scenario number one, which is we make a new all-time high. We go up more, we back test, we curl. I buy basically at 560. That's scenario number one. Scenario number two, uh, if we keep going down and we lose the 50 DMA, I want to buy in support. For me, that's at 510. So why 510? because that's a monthly high or low. That's where I consider there to be support. This is where I use things that are very simple, like a green and yellow light. Pause the video, read, read the notes, or subscribe and come, on, come and hang out with me tomorrow morning if you want more. Otherwise, to make it really simple in a couple of minutes, I don't see any evidence yet that we have a lower low, which means that, yes, there's weekly support that got lost. Let me make this really simple. Because as support gets ratcheted up, which means that our higher low gets harder and harder to maintain, like right here, look at the difference between the lows, low, higher, low. Look at the hole. Yeah, that's a big hole. Now we look to the last two candles, low, higher, low. Look at the low, which means the L number right here, 553.8. Five, five, now we got 555.0. Five, five, five oh. It's $1.20 basically. Yes, it's getting really close. And what's really important, um, I'll see if I have time to do this in a second here. It's that we initially formed a dead cat bounce on that, uh, on that area, and then we went down, which means there was a chance for it to get bought up. That was on ISM. It's the same thing that happened here on the Russell. This will be an easy example. Let's look at the green line or, or a gap fill. Initially, what does the market do? It fades at 945 on that ISM print and it bases right here on a gap fill. But then into the afternoon, the leg down, the leg down. Oh, so the market tried to bounce off this area, tried. And notably for the NASDAQ, you can see that we are going down. So it is bearish, right? Can't deny that. And then on the weekly here, yeah, we already had a weekly lower low. And now we're at a second lower low. So we got two times lower highs and two times lower lows. That's not good. On the monthly, yeah, support is a long way off. But this chart is in, it's nowhere near broken. Let me show you one more quick thing here too. Because it's the blue skies are bullish. So there's our previous all-time high. And that's resistance turning into support. And if higher lows mean we're seeing, if, if higher lows mean we're seeing defense at higher areas, all that means is that bulls are willing to bid it up at a higher area they were before. Low, higher, low, higher, low. That's called a staircase of support in blue sky territories, which are bullish. So yes, not all dips are created equal. But if you're trying to formulate a plan for what uh, Tom Lee is saying, I just gave it to you for free. So all we need to do is be mindful of the uh, the 550 area. And if we close below the 50 DMA at 548, 
hey, it's time to be cautious. Everyone's going to be looking to buy at the end of October. Is, is the market easy to time? Nope. And this is where all I'm trying to do is make it really simple for you. Green light in 2024. We're in a blue sky territory. Okay. And right now we're in a yellow light until we get down to 510 or back above 564. It's the exact same thing for the NASDAQ. We're driving on the highway. We had our foot on the gas. We're taking our foot off the gas, hovering over the brake. We're not hitting the brake yet. We're not stopping. We're hovering over the brake. Hopefully that's clear. And the data tomorrow and on Thursday and Friday is going to be very important. And then we have Apple next week. So I think Friday's a buy. Here's what I really want to see in the chart as I'm trying to wrap up here. So if right now we look at QQQ and also the S&P, we'll just look here because it's a little bit more evident. Let me get my lines back. Let me zoom in a little bit. And uh, I'm aiming for shorter videos, but I have a feeling that people want a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra help today. So I'm going to put in the effort. So if we think now, uh, let's actually go back here. So um, there's a little note that I have right here. <coughs> Smash a thumbs up too if you guys don't mind because uh, my throat is really raw right now. So what we're looking for is to restart the recipe. We need a we need a fail breakdown now. Why? Well, let's have a look because the chart broke down. It's a fail. So for it to be a failed breakdown, it means that we need to break down but fail to hold it. We got to print the lower low and then recapture it. By the way, that's what we did last week. That's a dip buying. There's your low from the previous week. We go below it. So we go below but we recapture it into the close of the week, which would be over here. Well, we got to see the same thing this week. So now we got, we're looking for two times uh, uh, failed breakdowns. That's it. That's all we're looking for. If the bears closes below, it would be the same thing for the S&P. That's at 555. If we hold that area, it's bullish. If we don't, it's bearish. We could be looking for a move all the way down to 510. Finally, a lot of bears seem really confused on... Um, so they, th this is just my take, and I, I normally don't like to respond to people who are commenting, but here's my here's my problem. So this a problem I see is this. The bears are arguing about why we shouldn't be at all-time highs instead of the fact that we are at all-time highs. This is why we shouldn't be here. Well, the fact is we are here. If you're buying stocks, you're making money. If you're losing stocks, you're losing money. Until this pattern breaks, which is a bearish reversal, buying dips is what you want to do. It's exactly what Tom Lee said as well. Let's have a look here because the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. German stock market record defies the country's economic gloom. DAX index has surged 13% this year, making fresh record highs. We talked about this on the weekend. So if Germany can go higher into recession and the U.S. is not in recession, why can't it go up more? Is the U.S. not the best game in town, the best country in the world, the best place to park your money? Yes, it is. But with growth scares right now, which is what Tom Lee basically said, flip-flopping like a flapjack, sometimes I do too. Um, inflation, sorry, GDP now got revised down to 2.03 as of today, right around the same time the market tanked. Why? Well, because the market decided to just reverse, right? Everyone's back at their desks. All right, sell everything. Here's the interesting part. Greed actually went up today. And this is really peculiar. Why? Well, because breadth went extreme greed. Uh, here we have uh, safe haven demand going extreme greed, drunk bonds going extreme greed. So when I look at the heat map, I'm like, well, it's not indiscriminate selling. There's a lot of selling out there, right? Right. Let's not try to pretend like there isn't. But what was working before is now working again. <coughs> to just make this really simple, I'll just show the screenshot here. And what it basically shows is that the, uh, uh, the, the, the gainers of August, which were XLV, XLU, XLF, Hey, they're not that bad. These are like little flush wounds. Negative 0 0.2, negative 0 0.15, and uh, sorry, negative 0 0.14 and uh, 0.74. We'll have a look here. All right, the losers, right? We got the mags right here, down 3.3. KRE, uh, that one's on the list, but SMH down 7.5, right? This is the risk spectrum. That's risky. This is less risky. RSP down 1.2. Yeah, large caps are selling off. It's, a, it's an NVIDIA story. It's an AI, uh, oh my God, everything's going to collapse. And then just to add fuel to the fire, now uh, shares have historically underperformed around launch events. This time better be different if we're bullish. So with all of that said, what I'm basically trying to tell you is that, uh, oops, that's uh, uh, something I was looking for. Mester is a hawk. Uh, but anyways, if we now look here, um, to make it really simple, because I know at 14 minutes, this seems like a long video compared to my previous ones. Now, if we go back to QQQ, I'll show you one example of what happened and then an example of what we want to see happen on the S&P if we're going to break down beyond what we talked about on the weekly chart. So here, we had buyers that were expected to be found here. What is this area? It's a gap fill. That's why we see it as green. Green is support. So 
What happened? Well, we found buyers exactly where we expect them to. But the buyers got exhausted, right? They bought it up. They bought it up. They bought it up. They're like, oh, my God, there's there's, there's more supply than, than demand. Lower highs, lower lows, boop, like down. That's what happened. So now if we see that same thing happen here on the S&P and we zoom out to the higher time frame because I just want to make it really simple. We now tap this area, right? We're tapping that, tapping that bid. So if we tap that bid and it keeps going down, well, again, we just got two 50-minute candles here. If we keep seeing lower highs and lower lows, we're going to exhaust the buying demand in the zone, which means we're going to need to go lower to find where the new demand is because demand is not going to be infinite here. Where's true demand? I just told you. I would buy the F out of that dip at 510. All right, at 15 minutes, this is a very long video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys at 9.15 a.m. tomorrow. Thanks so much.